In this problem we have a 2D force system acting on a beam type structure as shown here. In this problem we want to find the equivalent resultant force and couple moment that act at point A. So point A over here. Uh, and then once we've done that we want to find the equivalent single force acting along the beam AB. So somewhere along here we can place a single equivalent force that's equivalent to the force and the couple that we find at A, uh, which is of course also equivalent to our original three forces applied to the beam here. Okay, so firstly let's consider our plan. So first uh, we'll sum all of the X and Y components of the forces to find the resultant force at A. Okay, so note that we've got this force here acting at an angle, so we'll need to find its component forces in the X and Y direction. Uh, then secondly, we'll um, find the sum of all the, the moments resulting from moving each force to point A or finding the moment of each of those forces about point A. And then once we have our equivalent moment and force here at the point A, we'll find the equivalent single force that we can apply somewhere along um, the beam AB here. And we'll do that by dividing the resultant moment by the uh, y component of our resultant force. Okay, we don't need the x component because the x component will be passing through point A, so that will have no moment. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. Um, and note that we've now indicated our directions here. So in this case, I've indicated that y, positive y, is acting downwards, and we've got x acting positive to the right, as shown here. So our plan was to find the resultant um, from our force components. So considering uh, our force here, we've got the vertical component and the horizontal component of that 35 Newton force. Okay, so um, we've got the angle uh, defined in here is 30 degrees. So our resultant Oh, sorry, our component here will be 35 cos 30 degrees. And the horizontal component, or the x component, will be 35 sine 30. Okay, so that's the opposite side of this triangle here. Um, just while we're looking at components here, I'll just point out that you know, a lot of people uh, seem to draw their components like this over here. Um, I suggest that you don't do it like that because uh, it's not the best um, practice because it changes where the the location of the component is. So when you're calculating moments, um, so when we're looking at this distance here, for example, 0.4, right, from point B to where that component is, uh, that's different to where you've drawn the component over there. Okay, so always maintain the correct line of action of the components of the force. Okay, this is particularly important when you're dealing with problems uh, where you've got to calculate the moment of the force. You know, if it's just a particle equilibrium problem, it probably doesn't matter so much. Um, but in these problems where we're calculating moments, it's best not to um, draw your component over there. Okay, best to draw it where I've shown it um, in here. Okay. Okay, so now that we've done that, we can um, write out our um, equations. So we're summing the force components in the x direction. So we have our 25 Newton force here in the positive x direction, plus the x component of our 35 Newton force up here, so 35 sine 30. And if we do the sums, we get 42.5 Newtons. Okay, so then considering uh, the force components in the y direction, we have our 20 Newton force here acting in the positive y direction because we've defined uh, downwards in this case to be positive. And we also have the vertical component of our uh, 35 Newton force that acts at 30 degrees. So plus 35 cos 30 gives us a total of 50.31 Newtons. All right, so next consider the, uh, the moments about point A. So we have 35 cos 30, so the vertical component of our 35 Newton force here, times its perpendicular distance, which is 
uh, 0.2. Okay, so again, I make the point, if we had have drawn our component here, right, it looks like it's acting at a distance something less than 0.2. Right? So make sure uh, you draw your component looking like this. In this problem, I've said that uh, clockwise is positive. Okay, so uh, this force here is causing a clockwise moment or rotation about point A. So uh, that's positive here. Then we have our 20 Newton force over here right, times its perpendicular distance to point A. So that would be 0.2 plus 0.4, so 0.6, and that is also causing a rotation clockwise about point A. So we have that over here, 20 times 0.6. So thirdly, we have the 25 Newton force acting down here, the horizontal one, and its perpendicular distance from point A is this dimension here that we're given, 0.3, and this causing an anti-clockwise rotation about point A. Okay, so in this case, that's a negative because we've assumed over here that uh, clockwise is positive for this problem. So if we do the sums, we get 10.56 Newton metres for the resultant moment about point A. Okay, so then using um, Pythagoras' theorem, we can find out the resultant uh, force from our two components. So 42.5 uh, in the x direction squared plus 50.31 in the y direction squared, all square root, and that gives us a resultant force of 65.9 newtons. And we can also work out the angle from opposite over adjacent, inverse tan of that. Um, so in the y direction it's 50.3, which is the opposite, and the adjacent is the x direction, 42.5, so we get an angle of 49.8 degrees. And we can draw that on our diagram now. So we have our resultant force, FR, equal to 65.9 at 49.8 degrees, and our resultant moment, MR, equal to 10.56 Newton metres. Okay, so the next part of the problem was to find the equivalent force, FR, that acts out here somewhere. So this equivalent force that we've got here, it must obviously be equal to um, the force resultant that we found at A, and it also must produce the same moment effect about point A as our resultant MRA here. So if um, our MRA moment here is clockwise, then this force has to be moved out here to the right to cause a clockwise rotation about point A. And um, the way we work that out is to divide our resultant moment by the vertical component of our force FRA. Okay, so if we look up here, right, we need that vertical component right, because the horizontal component here is just going to be its perpendicular distance from point A is zero. Okay, so if we do uh, that calculation, 10.56 for our moment divided by 50.31 for the y component of the resultant force, we get a distance of 0.21, so we can draw that um, in our diagram. Okay, so we have our force here, FR, equivalent to what we've just calculated before, which is also equivalent to our original three forces here. Okay, so that's uh, the end of that problem. I hope um, that was helpful for you to uh, have a better idea of how to solve uh, and calculate um, equivalent system single force or equivalent force and couple to for a system of um, forces acting on a structure. Thanks. Bye.